That's it. You just heard the Detroit Birds, motherfucker. That's your first time ever hearing them. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. One of uh, the first stepping stones from my um, introduction to Detroit hardcore and DIY shows and punk shit. Um, After already going through my punk phase and Dropkick Murphy shows and casualty shows and, you know, the mainstream shit. You get, you meet somebody who shows you more stuff and they, they, they pull you a little further into the subculture and you learn about things you didn't know about, learn about bands you didn't know about. And sometimes it's love at first sight. And, uh, that's all I can say about this and the Detroit birds and refuge skate shop. And, uh, I don't know. I've been hoping to have Ian on for a long time. He's done a lot of shit in the scene, been around a long time, zines, bands, booking shows, touring. I learned some about him that I did not know, and you will too. He's a very, very cool dude. He has a good memory and outlook on things, especially the Detroit Birds. I, um, You know, I didn't know he was, honestly, I didn't even know he was in the band at one point. I thought it was just, you know, the original guy the whole time. I didn't know that. Ian joined, but when I was talking back and forth with Aaron about this, he brought that up. And I was like, oh, well, that would be fucking cool. And they decided to come to the podcast. I never thought it would happen. I never even thought I would have a Detroit Birds podcast. I just fucking figured that entire thing was long gone. I still think about them often. Still remember the good times often. And for Aaron to take the time to come do this. For Aaron to take the time to come do this, it means a lot. Like, you know, this shit seems to be all in the past for most, but it's really not. It's, yeah, if it's in your brain, it's not in the fucking past. If you love it, it's not in the past. It's still here. It's still current with you. It is just good to, to see this entire thing come full circle over 20 years later. It's still remembered, still loved by many. Still chiller than most. You may get an education out of this podcast. You may remember all the good times like you were there. Um, this is all its all good times. All fucking fun. I could have gone a lot longer for sure. Uh, there's so much more to both of them and to the band that I feel we could have touched on. Uh, it's, I mean, it's all just uh, anecdotal stories and fun memories. But that's what a podcast is for. Especially for me. I just like to talk about the fun times and have people, uh, you know, upload their, 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 their memories that they've uh, put on the back burner for other things in life. But you can't deny that the Detroit Birds was one of the most fun bands and partying bands. And same with Razzle Dazzle. They were, you know, the crew. They uh, were always, always causing chaos and, you know, wreaking havoc and pranking and having fun and, Getting fucked up, whether you like it or not. Suck my dick. Uh, uh, they go hand in hand. The Razzle Dazzle crew and the Detroit Birds, man. It's it's interchangeable. One one uh, one family unit. Uh, an extended locking out, you know, family. All all great friends. All the fucking perfect era of hardcore. And it doesn't get any better, man. Um, I can see the upswing on the punk fun side of hardcore coming back around here. I really like it. I'm enjoying the uh, the transition. And I know it ebbs and flows. It comes and goes. Highs and lows. Ups and downs. Tough guy beat down to fast punk hardcore to uh, whatever the fuck. Well, here we are. Um, I don't know what else to say. But... Thanks for checking this out. I hope some uh, this will find some people who were around back then who enjoyed the birds 
and the razzle dazzles and shit like that. Uh, who knows what will come of this? Who the fuck knows? My intentions are are probably quite obvious, but I would love to see a um a right yeah a bird show again. That would be fun. I know there's some circumstances for that to ever happen. Push the people who are in the band. Fucking tell them. Hit them up. Find them. Tell them we need a bird show. That's what we need. <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna get my little bird whistle and. You know, fucking get them to flock back, back around, and you make a, a make a um, what's it called when you show up, uh, an appearance. I had to stop and think about that word because I felt like a fucking idiot. <clears throat> but anyway, I'll go out saying this. Check on everybody who's your friends. Check on your homies who you haven't talked to in a long time. Talk to people who you love. Talk to your family if you talk to them, if you love them. Drink beer, smoke weed, or don't. And from the wise words of Will Atkin when he did the intro for the Detroit Bird Show at Refuge Skate Shop, the Detroit Birds are here to stick. If y'all don't like it, suck my fucking dick. And also, just a forewarning, the first, like, four minutes of this podcast, the audio wasn't that great for Aaron, so we stopped, I fixed it, and everything's great after that. Heads up, thanks for listening. Popping the podcast cherry. Popping the bow cherry. Popping the bow (laughs) cherry, baby. But look, I just want to say first, like, I just got to get out of the way, um, the Detroit Birds is the first um, DIY show or show I've ever been to at a refuge skate shop, and I didn't know who you guys were uh, when I got there, so Don Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, he was in ambush. I worked with him. He's like, come see my band. And he said, you guys are playing fucking Razzle Dazzle, Righteous Jams. And I don't know who else played. I don't remember. But that was the first time I heard of you guys. And it was fucking awesome to see that shit right away. Like, fuck, jumped off. I never seen nothing like it before. And uh, that was my introduction to like some like fuck, DIY hardcore. And that was. It sounds like a sick show. Yeah. 20 years ago almost. Yeah, I was going to bring you a, a flyer actually when I was digging through my shit earlier actually. I saw him and I, was, I didn't even think of it. A friend of ours, Bill Ballard, put that show on. Ian actually did the metal show it, before that a year prior. In, um, uh, it was in, on the other side of Dearborn, but our friend Bill Ballard did that. He, he made all the flyers at his job. Everything was DIY about that. Like Even us just jumping on that show, it was just... We, we borrowed... Ambush's drummer for it and Pablo? everything. Pablo? We, we played the same song twice. Like, everything. <laughs> we spray-painted shirts in the driveway uh, right before the show and everything. Like, that was a fun time in my life. So, what uh, what show was that, though, in the Detroit Birds, like... Was that the third show? Was it the uh, second show? I'd say that. Because was... I, I didn't, I, I wasn't, in the, I wasn't in that band then. You know, I've always so, kind of been a little bit more yeah. of a periphery member, but... I mean, I put out the record, yeah. you know, played a few shows, and then... Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. We should take it back, just w- w- real real quick. So, okay. The uh, first show. Yeah, well, well, even before that, the actually. The very first I, 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 just, I gotta take it just, just a little bit back here before we... And then we'll, we'll come back around to the when the, the Righteous Jam show was. So, me and CT, the bass player from Detroit Birds... Uh, we were at a posi numbers, uh, yeah. probably like 2001 or 2002 or something. And, you know, we would always be driving out to the East coast or whatever to go to shows and stuff like that, you know? So, uh, we saw our friend Dennis from DC, like we pulled up and he was like, yo, you guys are always driving out here for shows. And I was like, yo, that's cause we're the Detroit birds. You know, we, we flock out to flock. the East coast. Yeah. We're like a flock. And so that was the first time that, that, that like a uh, phrase had been said. Okay, and then CT took that and ran with it, and then, you know, that was, like, how that kind of got spawned or whatever. Yeah. And he was in Desperate Measures, right? Or he was a... He uh, was Dennis? No, yeah. De- yeah, probably just, like, a roadie or something. Probably just a roadie. But, yeah, so, okay, when when was the... Uh, what what the what era? First, okay, so the very first show was actually at, like, Idol... Idol kids. Idol kids. Were you there? I was yes, there. Yeah. I was. It was yeah. actually jailbreak. And he was. He wasn't singing then. He wasn't singing then. No, it Bill was Bill. Bill. Oh, so much history to it. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. And it was like a very loosely put together kind of thing. And like Bill Ballard actually sang. Yeah, he was the original. Show. Yeah. Uh, I forget 
who else? Desperate Measures played. Desperate Measures played. I don't remember yeah. who else played, though. There was a lot of people there yeah. at that show. Yeah. The, uh, this guy, I don't know if you've ever heard of Jason Lockwood. I know the name for yeah. sure. Yeah, he was like old school, like Detroit. He used to sing in this emo band called Madison. Uh, they were pretty good, like late 2000s. Uh, Ryan is still around. He did sound for all of Tied Down. He was like the sound guy. Oh, okay. He was he was one of the, I think the guitar player uh, or maybe the bass player, but uh, uh, he works at like Crowfoot and stuff. But um, yeah, Lockwood is not with us any longer. You know, he committed suicide. But yeah, uh, okay, that's why it sounds familiar. Yeah, he, when you he, bring it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good dude. But he, he ran. Uh, it was Idol Kids. Is that what yeah. it was called, or is it School Kids? Idol Kids. Idol, Idol, Idol Kids, Kids was, was a place. Okay, it was Idol Kids yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. Right? It was right yeah, next It was downtown. Somewhere it was downtown. Like, yeah. was like right next door to. It's funny because when I lived downtown Detroit, I would always drive by there, and like there's so many fond memories, and it's already like, I mean, that's like 20 years ago already, like by now. And it, that was a cool, cool, fun space, very short yeah. lived. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, really cool. Yeah, but that was the first show for Detroit Bridge, technically. Yeah. The second, I I feel like would be that show though, and that okay. was the mental show. And that was my first time cool. actually singing in a band. Cool. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and it's funny, again, there's yeah. a video if you look it up on YouTube and everything, and it's, it's hilarious. Oh, it's on YouTube. Oh, it's on there. Yeah, oh, it's sick. I got I to gotta, I gotta check it out. I got to yeah. check it out. Oh, okay, uh, so that was uh, the second show, right? Yeah, the second yeah. show was yeah. the one you just spoke of at Refuge, and that was by far one of the more like eye-opening shows that we had. There was a lot of people in that video, like Dan Sluka standing by, like... The um the one of the amplifiers, Sluka. all the guys from Razzle Dazzle. I mean, we were very close at that point. That was like the conception of that whole like the posse. Yeah, the posse. Yeah. I also remember because it's on YouTube. Um, I think it was a Will that did like the intro, like the Detroit Birds yeah. are here to stick. <laughs> Y'all don't like sense. it. Look. Sorry to go off topic, but I had my entire fucking high school saying that, and they had no idea what the fuck it even meant. Oh. I just started saying it, and they like <laughs> it's awesome. like the Mexican thugs, like they were all saying and shit. Oh. Like they're like, I don't know what that that's means, awesome. but it's awesome. So that was your yeah. first show, or oh, so my first like yeah. DIY hardcore. Yeah. Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen like Honor, Don't Like a Terror Show. Yeah. I've seen Bleeding Through. Right. Uh, I've seen um, I'll Let It Die before then. Right. Totally. And so it's all yeah. kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Don was like, stop listening to fucking Throwdown. That shit yeah. sucks. Like, go to this. This is the first, like, <laughs> I, I talked to CT before this, and I was like, so is there anything I should talk about? And he's like, make sure to say, like, what you said about how, like, we, you know, traveled, and that's how it happened. And then he's like, make sure you tell him that, like, there was no real big, like, fast hardcore bands that were, like, I mean, who was their coalition? And, like, there wasn't a lot of them around at the time, really. Like, we were, like, one of the first, like, we really liked Warzone. We wanted to play fast stuff. Like, our friends were in Razzle Dazzle writing, like, guitar parts that sounded like Antidote, you know? That was what we wanted to do. And then we also wanted to just have fun, you know? And that was kind of the basis of that. And it just kind of congealed naturally there. Yeah, what I've seen from, like, the outside as, like, a fucking 17-year-old kid was just some, like... I thought hardcore was, like, different, but all I seen was, like, punk rockers. Like, that's all I... I was like, oh, they're just fucking punks. Like, yeah. so what's it like, you know, cause I said, I seen terror and unearth and you know, all the tough guys with tattoos and like fucking scary or whatever, supposedly at that age, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I was like, they're just like some like fucking punk rock, like DIY kids. I was like, huh, hard, yeah. that's hardcore. Like when you're young, you just like f- mesh it all together, like from metal and hardcore. What do you have no idea what you're even fucking listening to, you know? Yeah. So that was just a, so just eye opening. I was like, right. "Fucking skate shop? Like, what? Are we, like, how? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I had no and idea." Eric Z was probably one of the biggest uh, pushers of us, right? I don't think we'd be a band without him. To be honest with you, like the whole reason we even had that gig was because like we just hung out at his shop, and then he like he we, he couldn't kick us out, you know. And then like we just eventually got like put on the the bill, and like we really liked. We just we kind of just shoved our foot in the door. To be honest with you. Our friends were in Razzle Dazzle, like, we kind of jumped on board with them, like, Mental was really popular at that time, and um, kind of everything just fell together on its own, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. And yep. then, fuck, man, like, there's so much more to that, though. Like, how far did you guys actually go? Because after that show, you know, I was like, I was like, whatever, I know there's a bunch of refuge shows, I know, oh. I'm eventually, like, out, not outbreak. Um, outburst maybe no. outbreak played yeah, outbreak we, we played. played with them yeah um uh, man there's a bunch of weird ones like we actually only played out of state one time yeah 
one time, and Ian Ian was out there. Uh, well, it, what was I, it? I was out there, but I took us out there. Yeah, yeah, because it was with War Hungry and War Cold Hungry, World. Cold World. That was title the, fight, right? Uh, Are they playing? I don't know if they were around then. They, oh. they may have, they may have played, but um, we're puking in the alley. I so... don't really remember too much. Actually, <laughs> yeah, that was that, that was when me and Ryan put out the the bird seven inch. Yeah. So I was like trying to Support kind of like it. get like a little bit of promotion. So I was, right. you know, I got us on a show on the East Coast, and then me and Ryan went out to the West Coast to go hang out with her room yeah. when he was uh, living out there. And then Cold World played, but that was before her room was in Cold World. That's where the fuzziness starts as when the record comes out, because like that was a weird time in all of our lives where we kind of had, we were talking about this on the phone earlier. We we're like, man, it's going to be kind of hard to remember a lot of this stuff because mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of it was like, uh, weird times in our lives of, of like fuzziness and like did that really happen that way or did we just like keep telling the weird story you know yeah and uh like there's so many weird shows like that would happen like that like i think we popularized the whole 9-11 party really big that was like a huge thing with us is uh the 9-11 celebration that we would always do <laughs> um we would always do a 9-11 party and i remember making a flyer for this and I I pretty much lied about the whole lineup, and I said that like mental was going to be there, even though we were good friends with Greg, and he came out and he had plans to come out and everything, but like he wasn't bringing his band, <laughs> and, I would, and then I, but I was just like in that posse mode where I was just like mental is going to play, righteous jams is going to play, uh, all these other bands are going to play, R- razzle dazzle like Detroit Birds like all this stuff. And I remember we were in Dearborn at my friend's house. We rented a moon bounce for the backyard. We got like a barbecue ready to go. We had been like, I put posted this flyer up. And I remember that morning waking up and like, what was that the photographer, that hardcore photographer? There was like a super serious guy who used to like take pictures for like Hellfest and stuff. And all of a sudden, like he like was living in Canada and he just shows up. I don't and know. like all these people started showing up, and like I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I didn't. Everybody? Do they, I hope they really don't anticipate that mental is going to be. I mean, they see that Greg's here, you know, oh and hanging God. out. And it was just a and joke was, for your friends, but like. it was so fun. <laughs> we had we played in the backyard. It was a huge joke. Like we made a joke band called Mushroom. It was like <laughs> it was like a mixture of Greg, me, and like uh, really the guys from Razzle here. Dazzle, and we just played like weird yeah, songs and everything kind of like everything was super fun you know like our friend from philadelphia came out phil leone he he put out uh the first uh or the last jailbreak seven inch on broken glass records yeah um <laughs> put out the residence yeah he put out five inch yeah he put out the razzle dazzle five inch <laughs> go upstairs um, fuck out of here <laughs> yeah i love him but he's, he's cool. gonna get scared he's cool. and jump yeah. and then Another more memorable 9-11 show is when uh, it took place, actually, in... Uh, well, okay, wait, wait. Yeah. The the Bounce House one was the first one, though, right? That was the first 9 that was, show. like, the most... What yeah. year was this? Oh, my God. Do you have God. any idea? 2004 or 2005? Yes. 2004, four. right? It had to yeah. been four. Early. Uh, well, five is when we recorded our... our we had a the practice demo. space, and we... I, I had a band with Ian called Strange Pills, but I was also singing in the Detroit Birds, but we never really did anything. You know, we didn't play shows all the time. But Mike Hasty had a recording studio there, and we were like, let's record the 7-inch. And so our buddy Tim Rengers, who plays uh, drums in Fireworks, yeah. we, we snagged him for, like, our drummer. Like, we're like, we're going to get him because he's a, he's, a he's a great drummer. Yeah. Great. Hey, Tim. How you doing? Uh, he's a great guy, too. Um we, before that, we had a bunch of scabs before, like, and, and we had Pablo as our drummer, and, and for the most part, we always just kind of sc- scored a, a, another person who was kind of around. Like, we had the guy from War Hungry, Mookie. Yeah, Mookie. He played drums yeah. for us whenever, and he, I don't know, I think even fucking DFJ played drums for us one time. That's when, possible, huh? Yeah, when we were just doing a random show or whatever. Uh, Ali played drums as well, too. From, Ali did, From too? Death and Custody. Oh, my yeah. God. He, he yeah. was always, like, we always... He played and the East Coast show with us. We had a pretty yeah. solid lineup besides the drummer. Like, there was always, like, um, it was always me singing, Chris playing bass, T-Bone playing guitar, and then we'd always kind of have, like, a different drummer. And then you you would, fi- Chris moved away, and then you kind of filled in for him. Or whatever. Yeah. And it was always yeah. kind of T-Bone. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know if we should bounce around here, but okay. Since you just kind of mentioned that, so uh, the first show that I played with Detroit Birds was with at Refuge. Um, it was with the Lion, Lion of Judah. Judah. Mm. Yeah. I think you booked the show, right? I'm pretty yeah. sure you did. I mean, I that was like. I'm pretty sure you did. Weird time in my life. I actually booked shows. Yeah, Lion of <laughs> Judah. Do you remember who else played though? Line of Judah and like um, I'd say Jesus Christ. I don't know who they were on tour with. I don't know. But they was, may have been with somebody. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really remember. But that was the first show that I played. So uh, I, I came out with a. I had a. I you had, had a bird mask. Yeah, I had a bird mask that yeah. I had borrowed from a party the day before. You looked like a plague doctor, I think. A what? A plague doctor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, like the ones that had the big nose. It was like one of those, I think. Oh, I feel like I kind of look like I was like about to do like a home invasion, you know, or you in like a like movie or something. Eyes like wide that. shut style or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Trying yeah. to get my dog. Man. What's up, buddy? <laughs> he's paranoid as fuck. He's all good. No, he's all no, good. he's got a. He's cool. Gotta put the gate up. He's cute and fun. And yeah, like, yeah. But he just scared me. He ripped that whole fucking podcast shit down one time. Oh like, my god! Oh my god! Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah, that was. I think there's a video of that um, that show. Uh, Refuge with Lion of Judah. It's floating around. I have seen it's it before. Floating around. I have seen it before. Every yeah. once in a while, I get bored and I'll just like you. I'll Google our U- uh, YouTube shit and I'll be like, Oh yeah. wow! My buddy CT always sends me. He's really into merch and stuff. He always sends me like old merch that was like that we made with like spray paint and stencils and like stolen stuff from like Michaels. <laughs> like, I would steal the shirts because I didn't have any money, and then we would. I would very I DIY. Would, and then I would like get some spray paint, and I would like just take a razor blade and cut the stencil and spray paint it and like we would sell it with like tapes that i also stole probably and then uh, very diy and okay. then and then we're seeing people selling that shit in like uh england and he actually it's before i, I told him i was coming here and he he's like and he was like send me the link and it's like two shirts that i made like it's being sold in england or whatever and i was like that one's a spray paint shirt you know, well, I, do you remember me like running to somebody at a barber shop that had uh, this is maybe like a decade ago or something, but they had paid a hundred dollars for a Detroit bird shirt that you made. Must have been a good year. <laughs> and they, they, cut, they cut it out. They cut it out the, and like sewed it onto their back. Oh, wow. They yeah. made a patch. Do you remember that? Wow. Do you remember? It was probably yeah. so tattered and thin. I mean, well, there, there probably wasn't that many shirts actually made, though. How, how many shirts do you think there were made each time? Maybe, te- the fu- the maybe fuzzy, 10? The fuzzy, maybe 12? No, 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 no. Of what? The spray paint? Any of the designs. I'm telling you, they were like Hanes, like undershirts. That's what I'm saying. Any of the designs. <laughs> Craft section. Just... So, I mean, you figure there's probably only Easy like take. <laughs> 30 or 40 shirts out there, if even. I remember I also bootlegged uh, uh, up like the three or four designs, too, and I kept those fuckers going. And we were friends with them, so I didn't like. Hey, Will and Haroon, I like. I would sell like the this cassette tape demo and the shirt, and I was like, you know, I didn't have a good job or anything. I was trying to make money, and I was. I mean, that's when you could sell stuff on eBay with well disguised envelope, you know, with cash. All right. Be like, oh, hey, can you give me like cash in the mail? And I would like <laughs> sell like. A Hanes shirt that I would just make there, the diamond on it, you know, razzle dazzle the tape, and then be like, "Hey, man! Like we were, it's kind of like we all came up at the same time there, you know? We're all family here." <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta uh, do, you know, to make them money. But though. also, it was fun for me. Like I still kind of like love doing shit like mm-hmm. that. Like I still have a lot of my old screens. I know you said that J- Jimmy like wanted one of those. What? What's up, Jim? Uh, he's gonna hear it for sure. He's yeah, uh, Ryan gave you that um, stencil that our buddy uh, Frank William designed. I actually do have an old, old st- um, screen printing stencil with one of the very first uh, bird shirts. It's kind of got like the eagle chain logo thing. It's yeah. got like three, three of them, and then Detroit Birds, three of them, Detroit Birds, kind of like the like the massive print yeah like we ha- fast hardcore shit we wore all those when yeah. uh when razzle dazzle played cbs mm-hmm. yeah yep everybody was wearing one of those everyone that, that was part the, of the posse yeah. dude one of the cool that i totally forgot that everyone was doing that then um the coolest person to ever wear a uh detroit bird shirt tarpy from iron age <laughs> i remember i gave i booked a sh- iron age show at refuge and 
we were hanging out with all those guys. They were blowing up. Um, I remember giving him a shirt, and I remember they came back around, and he was still wearing that shirt. And that was, that was like you can tell when someone's wearing that shirt. He was wearing that shirt, and I was like, yes, <laughs> they're like super popular right now. He's out there. I was like, we play like a handful of shows, maybe a year, you know, like if it's worth it. It's worth it yeah. to me. It's crazy, just like the weird like the legacy of the Detroit Birds and me, like it, like me. So to me personally, it's like. I don't know, man. Some sort of fucking magic to the band. Like, just seeing it for the first yeah. time, like, my first impression of all that. And then, like, everybody else's view of seeing you guys. The couch potatoes. <laughs> or the stage potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's just weird because, like, when I think about the band, I still think about it as being, like, 17 years old. Yeah. So it's, like, fucking larger than life to me. Like, the coolest shit I've ever fucking seen yeah. in my life. So just, let's just see. 20 years fucking later, man. Yeah, it's like still like, people are like that's the best fucking seven inch. They had the coolest merch and the most fun shows, like the coolest dudes in the bands. Yeah, and it's crazy because yeah, you know it's never too late to love a band. You know. Yeah, and you you when you posted that video, that was like the um, the refuge benefit show, mm-hmm. and that was at the Trumbull what? Trumbullplex. Yeah. Trumbullplex. Yeah. And like, how DIY punk can you get right there? I mean, that's they didn't it. even have that's it. That's they didn't awesome. even have fucking running water. They had a hose going under the door so you could flush. <laughs> that's the opinion. And there was I'm no DIY. electricity, and that's why the video is so dark. Oh, you know, okay. and it's funny because we were like, that was supposed to be at the Bohemian. Well, okay, right? Okay, we we should Ian, we should, Ian, we should, Ian we should break that. this show down. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, a flyer was somewhere else, and then it got. Moved. Yeah, we should break that show down. So okay, that was a benefit show for Eric Z and Refuge because they were going through a little bit of trouble at the time. Um, so that was what 2010, maybe. Yeah, yeah 2010? it was in Chicago, 2010 yeah. for sure. Okay, so you know, I uh, Will and Haroon mentioned that Eric Z was going through some trouble to me, so I you know put the team together and, and booked a show. And then, yeah. yeah, it was supposed to be at this other space. Well, it was supposed to be at a couple spaces first. Uh, so I had, I had some trouble finalizing a venue. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the uh, uh, last venue that I was supposed to be at was the Bohemian. And then they hit me up that day. And the day of the yeah, show. the day of like like literally like two we hours show and two hours before the show <laughs> they they hit me up and said that they they ran out of power and oh, no. that's because they were like uh, growing some plants at a house that was like down the street and they were running uh, uh, electrical wire like, the power got diverted yeah and a few hours <laughs> left before they can shut the lights off exactly so, so, <laughs> so and then we went to another place that didn't have power <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah so you know uh you know I mentioned it to. Uh, um, let's see. I, I think it was Jay from the Suicide Machines. So he, you know, hit up the Trumbleplex and then was able to, to connect it. And then, you know, we spread the word to, you know, let it, let it be known. And I actually, I think because the show got moved last minute, it kind of helped it because that was right when uh, Twitter was just popping off. Oh. So everybody was saying, Hey, the show got moved. You know, they were typing it on their Twitter pages. Blasted. So, a- so everybody's just seeing it. You know, so plus it, they had you in the driverway, like, "Hey, go here with a sign." Well, that was Ryan. That was back. Ryan. Right? We had Ryan. <laughs> Ryan was, you know, grateful. You know, how great. close was it to uh, the Trumbleplex? I'm not really familiar with the, uh, the Bohemian. They, they were kind of like I, I, I was not there like a far. handful of times. They were kind of more of like a garage rock kind of spot, but it was like I think it was like an empty school or something because they yeah. had they had like a perfect space that was. They uh, would do funk night there. I remember. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. do like dances. And yeah, shit, yeah, like yeah, there yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. So it was like the perfect kind of spot for like, you know, they had never had a hardcore show that I'd seen there. So, you know, it was kind of like a, you know, a good size stage, good size room. It would have been perfect for, for, you know, any kind of hardcore show of that size. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was in Southwest, the Bohemian mm-hmm. off, off of Michigan Avenue, probably like 25 yeah. or something, 25, 25th Street or whatever, okay. you know, oh, you know, over on that side of town. But so, you know, maybe like three, three miles. You know what I mean? Something like that. But, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, because you know a lot of people probably like uh, don't have Twitter at the time, or what you fucking still using MySpace? Then ask knows? a punk. A- ask a punk. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Phone number. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It was a really easy way to blast it. Then you know. Well, every, everyone was super excited for that show, though. So it's like even if you like you went there and it wasn't happening, you'd find out because you wanted to go there. I mean, who was playing that other show? Fireworks. And they were huge at that time. Yeah, they were popping up. Yeah, Fireworks, uh, Razzle Dazzle, Detroit Birds. Uh, yeah, Hawkeye. Um, 
I don't know who else. Uh, it was an early. I have a flyer, and it looks like a rap show that I made. Oh, face reality play. <laughs> yeah. Face reality. Face yeah. reality played there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Ryan Horde's band played that band. Yes, Louder uh, Than Bombs played. Yeah, yeah Louder, Louder Than, than Bombs. bombs. Yeah. yeah, Louder Than Shout Bombs. Shout out to Carlos. Yeah. Carlos Ruiz. Yeah. Don't let him fool you. I told you this the other night. I introduced him to you guys. I fucking, I put him on to everything. So mm-hmm. I brought him out of Lincoln Park High School. Like, he was listening to Dropkick Murphys like I was. He showed me punk, but because I worked at Jerry's with Don, like, he sort of led me in a different direction. I was like, hey, come this way. Come over here, man. Yeah. And that's kind of, he wasn't. Yeah, anything cool, but I was like, "This is the shit." Yeah, let's go over here. <laughs> right. Yeah, but for Carlos, yeah, but Detroit Diamonds with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were in that band. Uh, Ian. Oh, you too. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. it's funny. Did you sing for that? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I didn't sing. Oh. I, I play guitar. Actually, Ryan, Ryan sang it. Can you tell uh, him? Tell him how that all went down. Uh, uh well, I, you know, we probably shouldn't divert too much. Okay. But, we're talking about this but yeah, I mean, because you know, that'll kind of we we can go down any kind of roads if we start <laughs> the go, if we pull. start going this way. But so r- real real briefly, uh, I mean, I think me and Aaron, because I was thinking about this, uh, we have possibly played in the most bands together. For for me, yeah, I don't know if we've actually played the most shows together. No, but uh, <laughs> definitely probably the most bands. So, so it's got Strange Pills, Strange Pills, Detroit Birds, Detroit Birds. Razzle Dazzle. Yep. And then Detroit Diamonds? Was there another one, though? Oh, wow. I feel like there may have been one I've more. I have been in that many bands. There may have been one more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that was just, you know, a kind of like, a, I guess, a... Uh, like a like a I don't I don't want to say like a reincarnation of Detroit Birds, but you know, so it, it was you it know, was kind an, of like an a, extension of yeah, that or whatever. Because know, a so. lot of the other guys were like on to different things, including myself, and like like at the time, like we were kind of reconnecting with everyone still. Like we, you know, well, you like, guys were living in Chicago then, yeah, at that point, yeah. And so. me and Ryan came back and visited, yeah. and like re- like what um, Razzle Dazzle was going on tour with Face Reality, Build and Destroy played. Yes. Right. Yeah. Build and destroy. And that that was the first Detroit Diamond shows as well yep. too. It was in Virginia. But Rob Mansell played New York. In, uh, Rob Mansell played in. Um, he's Black Noise now. He's out in L.A. Yeah. Uh, but he played uh, guitar in my place in Detroit Diamonds. Yep. You probably shouldn't tap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just an FYI. Yeah. Just an FYI. Well, I do it so I'm like t- yeah. tapping on the stand. Just yeah. Boom, just boom, boom, boom. Uh, Derek Daniel was in Detroit Diamonds. Yep. Time. Double D. Yeah. Oh, he but double D. D. Double, double D, D. Yeah. played drums. For I us, know, we get, we get the best drummers. Early drummer, yeah. We get the best drums. Well, yeah. yeah he's fucking <laughs> he's a rock star now, man. He's amazing. Yeah, sounded yeah. great. At, uh, I, saw, I saw him play with Pity Sex. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Never at Tie Down. Yeah, Never Ending Game sounded great. Shit. I remember practicing in Lincoln Park with him, and a, one of, some of the, the some of the few times that we've actually practiced, maybe the only time that Detroit Diamonds have practiced. <laughs> Speaking of which, Detroit Birds never practiced ever. No, and never, that's like no. kind of like the what you whatever you can take away from like whatever you know about us, like and they see, sounded great. Not- you see the shows, and like you're like, oh yeah, this and that, like they were punk or whatever. Yeah, we never fucking practiced. I mean, the proof, I can the, honestly tell you, we never fucking the proof. Practiced. The proof Ever. is in the pudding at that <laughs> refuge show. I mean, all you have to do is listen to that set, and like you would think they would have ran through the songs, but like, no. It was my first time Never. singing, and it was the first time uh, with Pablo. So w- playing drums for us. Wait, no, no, no. Oh no, Filioni played drums the first time. Remember for that re- for that re- mental show, and then Pablo played the other for the outbreak show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's how it went. Yeah. <laughs> See, it gets fuzzy. You got that memory. It you gets got that fuzzy. Memory. You yeah. get the fuzz yeah, you on there. Unlock it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. deep. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, Filioni. Filioni. Yeah. Fuck, um, man. There's so much to it. And uh, so, you guys. So, what year was the seven inch recorded? What year did you guys do that? So, I'd say the, if I gave you that that um, cassette tape cover, yep. and it's 05, but I feel like. It was like either the beginning of 05 or the end of 04 where that was made. And um, because it says it's time 05. And then it just, I mean, it took us a while to get everything together. I mean, we did not have our shit together whatsoever at all. And it, everything took a lot longer. You what know? was the first show that you guys played where you had the demo, though? Do you remember? Well, I you... remember getting it at Refuge one time, but I don't know if that was actually a show that you guys played. I honestly, I don't even really, I remember when we had the record, the record release. Well, okay. The, 
you know, that's kind of bouncing around though. So, yeah. uh, I mean, the the record release was at a loss. Nine eleven. It was yeah. No, no, it was a Christmas show. It was a Christmas show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a, a Toys for Tots benefit. Uh, at a loft that was called R.I.P. that Ryan, me, and Pablo lived in in Corktown, uh, right by where the old Tiger Stadium was. I didn't even know it was Toys for Tots. I yeah. Oh uh, well, you know, <laughs> hey, it, it, it was it was hazy. It was hazy. It was hazy. It was hazy. But that that was the. Deep... I remember it was your place. I didn't yes. remember it was a benefit. That though. was the that was uh and that was the first Hawkeye show too. Uh, and wow. so that was the the first that that was the last time the the record release show was the last time the Detroit Birds like kind of officially played and then and then y'all didn't play again until the know, refuge benefit. On our record release show, we didn't we kind of like disbanded for a short time after which was <laughs> so that was in two thousand and six. <laughs> yeah. God damn. So like we have had an official re- record release and it was at where uh it was we called the R. I. P. It was Ryan Ian and Pablo lived there. It's actually in Corktown where Metaphysica Wellness is it's like a fancy schmancy like now ther- it is. therapeutic. Before it was I had a, a I had a massage. I had a massage there, store. and I was like in the room, and they're like, "How do you like that?" And I'm like, "It's weird looking around in here. Like, it's, I, I played a fucking show on the floor here. <laughs> like, all our friends came out from all over the place to like the, play here. The 9/11 show you're thinking of is with War Hungry and yeah. Razzle Dazzle, and Detroit Birds played that show as well too. So okay, we, we that said, wasn't that wasn't the record release. Yeah, it was. That, yeah, that was two separate shows. Two okay. separate shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, record release was around Christmas, the Toys R Tots show. The 9-11 was with War Hungry and Razzle Dazzle. Uh, but, okay, so we should start clocking here. Because I- I'm curious how many actual shows there were, though. Cause, so we got the first one was at Idol Kids with Bill Ballard singing, yeah. T-Bone, CT, and Phil Leone. Yeah. And then the second one was at the Righteous Jam show that you sang at. Mental. with Oh, Righteous Jam didn't play that show. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Mental... So that was the second show, uh, mm-hmm. and then Pablo played drums at that show, right? Phil, Phil played that. Phil played. Phil played. Uh, yeah. Okay. He played the same song twice. <laughs> okay. The <Rogers> jams <laughs> one. The Pablo's on it because somebody shouts out "Ambush's drummer." And that's what they yeah. say on the video, but I don't know. Did Did Righteous Jams play play Refuge? Was yeah. it Righteous Jams or yeah. was it Mental? No, it was for sure Righteous Jams because it was not Mental then. No, but I know they did play there, but it was Righteous Jams that I seen at Refuge with okay. you guys and Razzle Dazzle. I do remember an and Ambush show, because yeah. that was like Deer played. I think Jimmy Lawson was in that band. Deer? He, he was in that band, yeah. but oh, wow. like, it's Fucking really hard band. to figure out, because I didn't go to the Mental one. I only went to the Righteous Jams one, and Jimmy said he played the Mental one with Deer, and uh, you guys are just uh, Razzle Dazzle played. So there's two separate shows. So that's on you guys. So okay. So okay. So so okay. That was the second show. But what was the third show? So was that maybe the third show that Jimmy played? Maybe. Maybe. With Deer. Okay. Was that the outbreak one? I'm not sure. That could be. It could have been the outbreak one because I mean I feel like those were the three big ones that happened on uh, Telegraph there when mm-hmm. Refuge was on yeah. Telegraph right there. Yeah. Because so they they moved after that. So that's like three or four yeah. right there, right? Three or four shows. That's three, yeah. So what would be the fifth show? Now you're getting into weird territory yes. here. That's what I'm trying to think of. <laughs> so with the, with the fish, I'm trying to figure out how many shows exactly the Detroit Birds play. Okay. I'll, I'll never so be able with, to tell with you with the right fish now. show, would, be, would that be the one where I played with Lion of Judah? No, right, with the no, first... no, no, no. We played. We played what trajectory games. was that? Was that like seven or eight? I mean, I feel like 9-11's kind of getting tossed in the middle. There. Well, okay. There, how many 9-11's were there? There were... Three or four, right? That's where it gets weird. I don't know. There was the Bounce House one. There was Ooh, the... You know what other show I'm, we're forgetting about is the five-inch release. It was at a Modern Exchange. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The wow. Modern Exchange. Down River. Yeah, yeah. We played with... Uh, who was it? Uh, the guy, it was early Iron Age. It was... Uh, My uh, Luck. My Luck. My Luck played. Yeah. My Luck played. That was, was the infamous... The box, Razor Blade. The fight. box cutter. Yeah, between fight. Wade and Cliff. Cliff and Wade got into a box cutter. While fight. My Luck played. And we... Fuck? Wade, yeah. the guitar player from well, Iron Age. I don't, know, I don't remember that but show. But they were... every modern show. Okay. But they, it was, were, it they was, were just joking around. It was all in uh, good fun. But they uh, really know? got hurt and he, he needed to go to we the hospital. We had to go to the emergency room. Yeah. Ruined the night. Yeah. But that was the first show i played with strange pills yeah with strange pills play that was like three or four yep. shows in for that was strange pills. that was super both weekend yes. i remember because i i lived at home and wind out with my parents and i was like oh we're gonna play a show at modern exchange 
I swear to God, it was like one of those moments where you know your friends are like in town. You clear out the living room. We're we're gonna practice in the living oh room, and then like it was like, <laughs> I'm gonna move it right back, right back to <laughs> where it was, and they'll never know. And they didn't. But like, sorry, mom and dad. Uh, I'm an adult now. But... Sorry, mom. And dad. <laughs> wow. But it was one of those things, though. And we actually did play, and we fucking. I had so many people over my house; it was disgusting, and I can't believe I like got every nook and cranny covered. But uh, we played Modern Exchange. It was my luck. Razzle Dazzle Five Inch release. Detroit Birds, and I feel like there was like a Lansing band that played. Maybe remember Blake? Blake. It was called like it was called like Fade Away Jumper. Oh yes, the I remember band, Fade Away Jumper. Fade away jumper I remember Fade Away Jumper. Yeah, what, yeah. Up, what up, Blake? If you're out there. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so that was the fifth show. I can't. Do you remember a show numbers, before that? Numbers five sounds good. Five, five is always good. Five is always good. But, so is that four or is that five? Four, five. So that's five. Five, five, five. So that's the fifth show. <laughs> so what? What was the show after that? Was that the Lion and Judah show? I don't know. It, it might have been like another. Uh, it might have been another um, 9-11. Well, the net number. The net. W- 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 there was the bounce house nine eleven, mm-hmm. and then I don't think the next nine eleven was until R I P, which in two thousand six. The bounce house nine eleven was two thousand four. There's a lost year. Yeah, there, there, we skipped. <laughs> we skipped a year, and then there was the R I P nine eleven show. Yeah, but the line of Judah show was before that, mm-hmm. um, and so was the five inch record release show was before that. Yeah. So, so b- after the five inch, but before the line of Judah, is what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep track of the shows. <laughs> just trying to keep track of the I, shows. I, the chronology is like it escapes me at the time, and it, it's very funny because everyone, like you sent me that, you sent that video, right? Oh my god! Like I can't. That's a, such a fond time in my in my memories in my life or whatever. But at the same time, I'm like. Like we said before, like after that, like there's like about like three or four years where I was like, man, like you said, we're a punk band. Yeah, man, we fucking after you saw us there, that was like right after I was straight edge. I kind of went off the deep end. I went off the rails, completely off the rails. (laughs) And I know Ian did too a little bit. Maybe we both like we're in our own little like flying saucer for a little bit, you know, lost in space. (laughs) Lost in space. (laughs) So how many times did you see Detroit Birds? Um, probably like three. So what were the three that you saw? So the only two that I remember, I went to the refuge one, or yeah, the refuge uh, benefit one. I wasn't there the entire time. I don't even know for sure I had to see you guys because I was at, yeah, because it was there at the fucking, uh, uh, Trumbleplex. And then at refuge, the one I said with Righteous Jams, and for some reason, that's all I can really remember, but I feel like I've seen you guys more than that. If you guys played at the Modern Exchange, it was a five inch. It was the was five it just inch once? release. Yeah, just, yeah. Once. just, just once. Okay, once. no, I didn't go to that because I don't remember that. But yeah. see, because I also remember like not like like this band is so big in my head. But I was like, where the fuck were all the shows? Because you know, for a long time I was going to shows for like every fucking show. I was like, yeah, I was like, did I miss like? Is there something missing from my head too? But there just wasn't that many shows. So that's what I'm trying to figure no, out. There so really wasn't that many. So there shows was maybe okay. So okay. So okay. We one out of state show. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let's, let's take it back here. So we got it was like the flyer where I told everyone like this band's coming. The photographer comes out. I'm like, hey, have so we, fun. So we got hot dog. So after after the, the five inch record release show, there was the the two R.I.P. shows, and then y'all didn't play again until the uh, the Refuge Benefit, which is in 2010, and then I remember there, the, yeah the refuge there was a big hiatus before the refuge benefit because I had moved to Chicago my buddy CT had moved to Chicago like there was this big Bone Daddy boot, was still Southwest boot, but yeah our friend T Bone was still the only person in Detroit Detroit Birds guitar player and then yeah and then um, Tim we just hit him up and he was like yeah I'll do it I'll do it Tim's the best man when we recorded with him oh my god he just like crushed it he crushed it like he's like he just shows up he's like I'm gonna do with the track first. And then he just like nails it. My KSD out there. He's got that busted ass. Like he had a nice kit, but like the symbol was broken. And he's like, "I'm gonna do it anyways." And then he just was like, <laughs> "I swear to God, he did our demo. He busted out the track in like 
no time flat. First take, pretty much. One take wonder. I mean, he's he's he, he's a surgeon. So okay. Uh, <laughs> so after the we are not. <laughs> not not to beer not to beer us off topic or whatever you know I don't want to beer us off to, off topic but so after that it's okay. it's there, crazy. after that uh, the the next show after the refuge benefit was I think the last. There was two other shows after, I believe. There wasn't many. There was the 9-11 show that was at El, El Club, Club before it yeah. was uh, the, the modern El It was El literally Club. El Club. Yeah, like, when, when it was this still like a like, Mexican town, El Club. This is literally like El Club as we know it. Even like years ago, it was like a pretty decent venue. Like I remember we still lived in Chicago and Carlos was like, Looking for a venue for us. We're like, we want to, me and Ryan wanted to do a, a nine, another 9 11 show. Ryan booked that show, though. Yeah. Ryan booked that And so Carlos is like, we'll do it at, at Club, El Club. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, it's literally like where people did quinceaneras for like their families wow. and stuff. And we've, we got that fucking place booked up for like what? Like 150, it's 120. Expensive it was to cheap. Rent now. And yeah. And like now, <laughs> yeah. now it's literally like, it's like a, Fucking, like they do rap shows and yeah, stuff there. You gotta now. buy the bar and security. Shit. No, <laughs> I was security there. I was because I remember at one point there was an, a, an instance where there was a very yes. small opening between where the bands played in the bar. It was a very small door, and our friend. Someone was moshing, and then like I, during they, build and destroy, yeah, and they hit our our friend's girlfriend, and then like everyone tried to get at them. It and wasn't I, exactly I was, like that, and I was literally was like a like cork yeah. in the door, and I was like, "Stop!" And everyone was, was like, "I was holding destroy. back out an army behind me." <laughs> <laughs> there was a brawl. There was a brawl that got taken out into the street. But but we did yeah, Ryan Ryan, yes. my buddy Ryan. Uh, he he worked at this place, Peace Chicago. Uh, pizzeria Cheap in trick. chicago and he had a uh he had brought the security guard over with him and he gave him like a giant bottle of like whiskey and he paid for his like mega bus ticket and he was like hey gus like come out here for the night like just like regulate for us and like we needed him and he literally picked that dude up like he was like a, in the crane game picked him up and then just walked out and everyone was like what do we do it's like this guy's like a fucking eight foot black dude like like, we can't do anything and i'm like i don't know what to do either i'm just standing in the door and hold him back back. no fighting no one's gonna like do anything to him he's just escorting him outside right now you know yeah no it's all love it's all love you know we just want the peace yeah el club peace baby (laughs) So, okay, there was one other show after that, and I think that was the last Detroit Bird show. I played bass at that show. It was with Vulgar Display, Build and Destroy, at the Garden Bowl, and that was in 2014. I forgot that That was in 2014. So, okay, that's probably, what, seven or eight? Shows that we're talking about here, right? Less than that are the entire trajectory. Less than well, then there's the one that was out of state. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So that's probably like. Eight shows, maybe. Right. Total. From, total. from 2004 to 2014. Ten yeah. year span. So that's, that's like one show span. a year. <laughs> on average. Hey, I'll, that's okay, though. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. it. Because well, that's why there's that aura that you're talking about. That you're like where you think the band is like bigger than life or whatever. Yeah, or, like or that people still talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's that elusive yeah, quality. It, it, it was like, uh, it, like there's so so little of it that like everyone is still like when it came over <laughs> it was like a big thing or whatever it was like oh sh-. even if it was like spur of the moment it was like damn mm-hmm. well yeah cuz were you like some like the first like wind dot kids like to start that shit or, or, i mean as or far were you as the only one i was the only i was the only river rat i was literally like the only person well probably of that era i mean there was like I the am. whole like universal stomp po- yeah. posse and yeah. stuff like that you know what i mean like i mean mike know, like, cools mike cools is from lincoln park yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cools yeah. is from down here yeah, okay. yeah. He, his his mom was shout out to Placenta. Placenta. I'm, I'm, she was my science teacher and at wilson <laughs> oh no shit yeah yeah <laughs> shout out to miss cools dude. that's awesome <laughs> yeah fucking uh yeah and um I was just thinking of like downriver people, but it went right out of my head. I don't even yeah. know. R.I.P. Danny Albright. I'm the only Danny Albright, my homie, man. Yeah. Fucking, I, I love that kid. <sighs> he went south fast. He broke edge and fucking died. <laughs> it <laughs> happens. It happens Christ. to the best of them. You should have stayed straight edge. Mm. But what are you gonna do? 
Fuck. Yeah, dude. He was a big fucking Birds fan. I remember him. And uh, yeah. he was a wine dot. He, he knew uh, Joe Hyde and Jam and all those yeah. guys. Like, they kind of you know looked Joe out Hyde for him for shit. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Big part in my like hardcore upbringing, going to Mr. Muggs, other than Ian, you know, he's he's like he's uh, um, a shower of like the way for me. Um, I'd say Joe also, you know, like uh, you Kenny, mean? Kenny Smith, Kenny Smith, like what up, Kenny? He's he he kind of came around at the same time as me. I remember going to shows at Mister Muggs and looking around like, hey, what's up, man? Like. I'm just like you. Like, I don't know who the fuck is, anyone is here. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you. yeah, that's how it goes, man. Like, you just you know? don't know until you, you show up five, six, seven, yeah. ten shows. And you're like, well, you look a little uncomfortable, too. <laughs> and that's just fucking weird. I've always felt uncomfortable yeah. still. I'm like, oh, we are, we're always at the same shows together, but like, we're not cool enough. You know, like, I'm not like Ian. They won't let me in the back where the video games are yet. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what, like, when, like, Don showed me this shit, too. Like, he's like, he's like yeah, show up. And just, like, didn't talk to me. I was like, all right. He's like, you come to my show, but I'm just going to fucking ignore you. <laughs> and fucking Rob Armstrong, him, too. He's a motherfucker. Oh, Such my a God. Good, he's a good guy to have on your side at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a he, wild man. A fucking boiler make your ass yeah he's, like he'll fucking he slapped the yeah, shit out yeah. of me i said the story before he slapped the fuck out of me because i wore uh, oh, a straight it was like an until the end shirt and had three x's on it mm. and i wasn't straight edge at all ever yeah. and he's like that's disrespectful to the edge damn bro oh man, man. i was at uh, uh when they it. recorded the seven inch i was there with them in the studio yeah with jerry and, is that who did it uh, until the end Craigo? oh oh, oh until, until the, the end? end yeah that holy first shit. seven inch yeah oh, yeah holy fuck. i was living in florida down there at the time but yeah with pete florida all right and i was hanging with uh chris who was uh he was uh chris from poison the well he played drums on the uh on the first until the end seven inch i did not know that at all yeah. that's some yeah. lore yeah that's why i stuck around with this dude right here he knows what he's talking about yeah he's been around yeah, a little yeah, bit have, he's, he's, he's got a he's he got a lot of history he's got a lot of stuff going on right here that people don't even know you know like you're trying to talk talk about eight shows here this guy's got uh yeah we don't want to divert too much <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go down some rabbit holes well i know you've you've been around a long fucking time um Couple Shit. years, a couple years. When I've been to a couple start? shows. Like we can just—it's a brief history. Oh, like, how did you start going? I don't to know. Shows? If we Where can are you know. from? Are you from Michigan? Or are you from somewhere else? I have no idea. I just know now you're a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. I'm from <laughs> Michigan. Uh, yeah, I started going to shows in '96. Um, I was nine. Okay. Okay. So a long cool. time ago. But yeah, so I mean, you know. That's that's the brief history right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, were you like Don River, Detroit, East Side, West Side? Oh yeah, yeah. You know? Uh no, no. I grew up in uh you know in Troy. Okay. Yeah, Troy, yeah. So sixty seven, sixty eight, exit. Right right by Big Beaver Road, ex- exit sixty nine. <laughs> that was the one. That okay. was the one. Oh, okay, that is the Troy exit, okay. <laughs> exactly. Like a Rochester. Scumbag fanzine. <laughs> Scum Yeah, yeah, man. Look, let's just go back a little bit, because like since I started this thing. Uh, January of 2021 is when I started doing it. You've been suggested fucking numerous times by so many people. And I did reach out to you on Instagram a long time ago. Got nothing back. You ignored me. So, oh, sorry about that. So, I didn't know. So I didn't know. Bad. Bad I didn't boy. see it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not usually like that. I reached right back as soon as you as soon as you messaged me. I did it. Yeah. You hear no. that? No, I'm just talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> but no, no. Well, just because like I was like fucking Ian Courtney. Like I know you did a lot of shit. You were in uh, Hawkeye, right? You had you had so many bands. I know at one point you were either on the road with Coldest Life, maybe filled in a couple times. Oh, uh, yeah, I filled in a bunch of times. Okay, was, no, was I'm just kidding. Back. I'm just kidding. No, yeah. he, he was, I, I did go on the road with Coles. Yeah. I, I was with them when uh, they, uh, during their rec- uh, recording session for, for Born to Land Hard. While well, you were there? Yes. That's crazy. Uh, they, they mixed the record up in uh, upstate New York. It was in Troy. We were hanging out with like Stigmata the entire time and stuff. Um. Yeah, that's big though. Like you know, like, like you were there, but for someone to hear that, they're like, "Oh, you were there when Borderland Hard was recorded." How old were you? Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. So that came out in what ninety seven or ninety eight? It was ninety eight. Yeah, okay, ninety eight. Plus minus records. Yeah. yeah. Andy Dumps. Plus Andy minus. Yeah, he's elusive was... too. Trying to get hold of that guy too. He's out we there. We can we can call him up if you want. <laughs> yeah. The plus minus records message board was yeah. like my first like yeah. foyer into like getting a hold of like people in like ian's world really like 
And I feel like that was like the end of that era because people don't use like that message boards were like the way you could like find out about shows mm. and find out like it was kind of like the punk thing. Like, like there's no Instagram, there's no Facebook there. It's just, here's what, here's what's available to you, you know? And it was kind of like, it was actually more readily available to be honest with you. Like a couple shows a fucking week at Mr. Muggs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, plus, plus you plus a bunch of shit talking too. It was kind of funny. Plenty of that, yeah, as, well. <laughs> Plenty of that as well. It's the internet, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes way back that fucking edge lord shit. No, yeah. but you know, one thing I was talking to Marcus uh, Villarreal. Oh yeah, homie Marcus. So I told oh, yeah. him you guys were coming over, and he told me one Hawkeye. thing. Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hawkeye. One thing to mention about oh. you, which I don't know if it's true or not. He said you booked American Nightmares' first show here in Detroit. Is that true? Yeah, me and well, that was kind That's of a big a, deal alone. That was kind of a weird situation. So they were supposed to play at um, at the Sanctuary. Well, whatever the club, the Paychecks. Sanctuary was. Yeah, when it was Paychecks, yes. Um, they were supposed to play at Paychecks. And we uh, we were dropping the promoter. Uh, I, I didn't book that Paychecks show. And we were trying to, we were like, we saw a listing for it. And we were like, hey, what's American Nightmare and Nerve Agents doing? You know, they're playing the show. So we were trying to figure out. And... We, we dropped the venue line. I dropped the venue line and they didn't even know about it. So me and Bill Ballard hit up, uh, Wes and, you know, let them, Wes from American Nightmare and let them know that, that they weren't even playing the show. So we moved it to this space that I believe was called Logic or something. It was just an art space or something. I had been there for like an art show and I just asked the guy if we could do like a hardcore show there. He, he, he wasn't like a hardcore dude, you know? So, American Nightmare came through. Coalition played halfway through American Nightmare set. Um, this is like 2002. Were you at that show? No. Okay. This was before. Okay. So, this is like, yeah, probably 2002. Um, I don't even know if their first LP had come out. It had just been maybe the first the two seven inches. Whatever, yeah. I think just the first two seven inches. So, anyways, halfway through American Nightmare set. Uh, the cops got called because, you know, the neighbors didn't know that some crazy show was going on. So the show gets shut down. Uh, my homie, Brian Ebert, who sang in Parallax View, he was having a show that night, too, that Page 99 was playing at Mr. Muggs. And he was saying if I had any trouble to let him know. So I hit up Brian. Everybody from that show... Uh, drove from That's Hamtramck like, to Ypsilanti. That's like, like a 45 four, minutes. Yeah, yeah. it's all like 40, 45. It's yeah, a little yeah. bit of hike. And then, yeah. and then American <laughs> Nightmare jumped on that show and played another set. And for years, those guys, and everybody went buck wild in that place. The entire room was moving. So, yeah. um, you know, for years after that, the AN dudes would, every time they would see me, they'd be like, yo, that was like one of the craziest shows we ever played. So, you know. It's interesting. That's, you know, so when you look back, like before they were who they were, at least, you know. I mean, they were always something, though. Well, yeah. But, they were always something special. But for that to be uh, such, like, a still, like, a, like in the moment, like, organic thing, like, oh, the, whatever you're supposed to play here, shit didn't work yeah. out. You went somewhere else, cops came. Won't let like, it die. Let's make it. Yeah, we're going to fucking play tonight. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's, yeah. That's huge because now people are like, no. I'm just gonna go home, you know, cry yeah. about it and be a fucking bitch. No, you that's know, like the are. punk drive right there. It's <laughs> like, it's like, no, no, I like literally, I'm playing once a year. Those like, this Boston shit is gonna bitch. fucking happen. <laughs> I will fucking find a place that will make it happen and like, I will like go off on a limb to make it happen. You yeah. Know? And, and you that's kind of like, well, I mean, Ian fucking and Ryan, they put our fucking record out like just because they just like had faith in us and like they were like, this is cool. I love this. Like, this is something Detroit that gonna, is the best. This is what we're going to do. This is my family. This is my friends. Like, I'm going to fucking put it out. Completely self put out by, by these guys right here. You know, like no record label. Well, I mean, your record label. Well, I don't know. If you, I don't know if you could call it that. It's just stagnant records. Only two stagnant. records. Only two stagnant. records. Yeah. <laughs> there was a reason we, I called it stagnant, you know? Just yeah. for, I haven't just sat still for yeah, a long exactly. time. Exactly. But now all of a sudden people are like, hey, what's about those records? And my, it's funny oh because gosh. you had a bunch of records in his closet. I don't know, if, I don't know if we should get into the records. He had a bunch of records <laughs> in his closet. And then, like, when we were in Chicago, we're like, okay, we're going to do, like, a couple shows or whatever. And, like, we're like, we should fucking press some, like, record covers and stuff. And then, 
And then when I came moved back from like Chicago, like our my buddy CT is like super big DJ into like collecting records and stuff, and he's like, I'll fucking make these record covers and stuff, and like I don't even know if there's any left anymore, huh? Oh, you're talking about the last press, that, last cover press that he like did that right up there, something like that. Oh yeah. yes, Greg from Locking Out did the artwork yeah. for that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, you have you have a full color one. That that's probably a, that's, that's from that's the original, original one from the record release yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, so I got that there wasn't that many of those. There was not. Is it a two piecer or was it folded? Because we, we uh, it's two pieces. It's two because yeah. that's the original. I cut one that then. out at the show. We, so I was cutting like it at the show. For, it's for, a front and the, the back two piece the, yeah. cover. <laughs> Lyrics for only one song in there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Fuck you straight and to hell. It's black and white. It's black and yeah. white. Yes. And yes. So yeah. it's yeah. weird. I There's, only got that like three years ago out of a bin at LDB Fest in. In Kentucky, I didn't oh, that's have wild. it. It's wow, traveled. cool! It traveled. I yeah, love so, it. So I love lumpy, seeing it. Um, Days Records. Yes, him. He had it, and I was like two dollars. I think the price tag is like two or three. Good deal. Good deal. I, like, I mean, yeah. nowadays people are like, "Hey, I want that thing." I, like, I think oh, it cost me like one. ten dollars to make one of those. And I feel like those covers. <laughs> so the profit, the profit just went up, right? How many? <laughs> how many of those covers do you think were even made? I, I, Maybe like for it. those ones, I made a hundred. A hundred? Yeah, a hundred. Because use them all. Well, I, I. I got rid of those at the at the record release show, and yeah. then I took them with me to Young Blood Fest. Oh, okay. that like Iron Age played Line so of that, Judah. So I was able to push that some the South. Yeah, that, that's that's maybe yeah. how Lumpy got it. You okay. know, because because yeah, it traveled to the East Coast. Young Blood Fest was in uh, somewhere in in PA, like yeah. out, okay. out by Philly. You know, East Coast somewhere. Yeah. Part part of me, Sean Young Blood. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking funny. Um, but so before we get off topic with that, talking about Marcus. He told me, well, he sent me a picture of his uh, Detroit Birds one, and there's like a stamp, like a unicorn or something in it. And he said, like, you have. Oh, like, with a kiss. Or maybe a unicorn. I, 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 there, oh, my God. There, we there, made so many. There's multiple versions oh, so of the record. Had, he had, like, kissing lips on it or yes. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, yeah. Like, bro, like, no. A girl did it. Maybe there's maybe. multiple, or Ian. multiple. <laughs> I ha- you know, I hand, ki- uh, you know, I lip kiss them. Every single like one. Glitter lipstick on gold, it. gold lipstick. Yeah. It was gold like lipstick. We were going to Dork Wave a lot, and we were listening to a lot of New Wave at the time. So oh my God. we were dancing. Of- <laughs> yeah, we were dancing. Yeah, right there. Oh yeah, that Ooh. that must be a different. Yeah. Okay, yes. the unicorn, the gold unicorn. He has a black and white version though. So yes, that was there the, are many that, versions that was of that. Times record. were tough. Yes, <laughs> times were t- you said no, no color, no <laughs> color, here. only <laughs> black and white. Two cents a piece. Yeah, it's like we have color. the record, and we just need to make shit happen. <laughs> There's probably yeah, there's, speak, speaking oh, of ten di- speaking yeah, of ten different shows. There's probably ten different covers. You know, oh, man, for I, for the Detroit Birth Seven. I, I guarantee you, there's like. Possibly twenty. Yeah, very ragtag. <laughs> because because, like, but uh, only five hundred repressed. So we got rid of all of them. I know, and and, and uh, it only took until like last year to get rid of all of I'm them. I'm telling you, when I moved to Chicago, so that's like 15, fifteen years to push five hundred records. I had like a grip. <laughs> I had a grip of like fifty of them, like maybe forty five when I moved to Chicago and my box. And I was like, I'm gonna keep these for as long as, and I'll make a new record cover. No, I never did it. And like. We we made so many different covers, and I got super creative with it sometimes. I mean, I remember one time I put, like, an American flag in one with, like, a drug bag with a guitar pick in it. Like, oh, my God. I was doing all sorts of weird stuff, so I would Amazing. I would love to see that. Like, you said, I got this in Kentucky. I want to see my American flag drug bag shit so somebody, with a staple in it. Like, I want to see that shit. For somebody else <laughs> for, from the band, if you listen, if you say the names, um, they had sent me... Some shit on Instagram. It was something like weird, like for like, like, it was like, it was like porn on the fucking yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was the CT, CT. cover. CT. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's he found into... some like uh, I think it was like homoerotic, like you know, eighties uh, like BDSM yeah. Yeah. type of stuff or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. That. off of Michigan was. Avenue, yeah. there's like an adult bookstore, and he went in there and he got like a bunch of adult magazines for yeah. free. And then he just like chopped him up. He, he made, made an individual cover for each one. That was to benefit. He has an art space called Gray Area. So yeah. he was trying. I gave him the rest of the Birds records to try to raise money so they could get a, a yeah. speaker, a PA system mm-hmm. for, for the venue. That's cool as fuck. That's yeah. really cool. And well, he sent me all the different like, variations of shit that he did. And I was like, that's really fucking cool. Because I had no idea that existed. Yeah. Um, just all the different like, very, you know. Of variants, if anybody cared, they'd be like, oh, there's a bunch of different, you know, um, <laughs> oh my limited God. edition, one <laughs> yeah, of a kind. Exactly. One of a know? kind yeah. indeed, because, like, I'm telling you, like, when I lived in Chicago, like, it was, like, 
Yeah, Y'all and Ryan were making it happen too. And then yeah. like we had another press that was I say the other bigger pressing other than that one would be that print, but was just we used black a black seven inch cover and we used silver. There was white ones too. And then we had a the, white one. The black silver. ones were yep. for the Refuge Benefit show, right? And then the white ones yep. were for that Detroit Invasion yep. weekend with Build and Destroy Raz Dazzle. And I, I, First Detroit Diamond yep. shows. I had a black one and I gave it away to my buddy Ryan Wilson over in Chicago with the Wilson brothers out there. They're they're hardcore alumni out there in Chicago. Um Chi Town. Yep. Chicago's a great city. Chi Town. Yep. Still yep. to this day. Yep. Amazing that was shit going on there. Big part of like I mean it's funny when I moved out there, everyone was like super into like Razzle Dazzle and then like they didn't even know about Detroit Birds. Because we never played out there, you know? And then like I remember when I first moved out there, I played with Razzle Dazzle. Ian played with Razzle Dazzle. Um we played at the Beat Kitchen over in Chicago and it was I hadn't even been living in Chicago for a year. And then we play there, and there's people in Chicago that are like, that was fucking sweet. Just like you're like, that was my first, like, cool, like, exposure to that type of music. There's people that come up to me, and they're like, man, I this is my first time I took mushrooms. And I went to the show, and I was oh like, on, and I saw that. And I was like asking you, hey, I ordered a record, and you didn't pay me for it. And I was like, that's that other guy's problem over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. And yeah. but but eventually it came around and That's I was so like, funny. you know, it's funny. And I was like you know you Raz just, had the problem too, you pay for merch, it's never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> well disguised cash. Well disguised Detroit cash. Bird style. Detroit Bird yeah. style. Yeah. It's gonna get to you. Well, yeah. You just gotta wait around. I know a few people that's waiting on some Raz Dazzle merch from like twenty oh seven. That's funny. Keep as waiting. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, speaking of they're about to drop some shit, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Here, Heroes and Martyrs. Yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, discography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Discography. It used to be known as... songs that were never released, right? Is that happening? Uh, the Songs for Babies. Yes. Yeah. Which I think you and I were both playing in RZL during that time So those period, songs right? are like over 10 years old, right? Yeah, or like, they it's not be. close. Probably older. Yeah, because yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was like new. Somebody told me about it like maybe like a year ago. I was like, holy fuck. They're like, those are older. Like, yeah. This is old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it just never came but out. But I, I, I enjoy that there's a like a label that's like, hey, like old jailbreak stuff. Like we're going to, like you guys need to hear this shit. Yeah, and like that, it's cool that they're like taking the reins and be like, like this is cool shit that you guys need to see. You know, like we're gonna we're gonna present it in a package for you. Yeah. Like, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, Steve, he was out here. Yeah. He was at Tied Down. Yeah. So he was also at the No Warning. Yeah. Uh, ceremony Build and Destroy show. Cool. That, that you went to. Yep. Yeah. I didn't see the Tied Down show. I went to the No Warning show though. Well, pre-show, Tied yeah. Down pre-show. Yeah. 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 yeah but anyway, Steve was there. Yeah, the, yeah. the guy who's putting out the the Razzle Dazzle discography. Yeah, well, that's mm. still just as just as important. They're playing with fucking Gorilla Biscuits. I heard they were handpicked out of all Detroit bands. GB they should. wanted. They should. The RZL. Hey, to hey, show if up, you want man. Detroit Birds to play? Just start just, today. Just give, <laughs> just give us the word, you know. Let's go. Yeah. You need to do a reunion. <laughs> Edgeman, fuck Gorilla Biscuits. You headline your own show, at Edgeman. Jimmy would shit his pants on the floor. No, um. So the whole thing with like. With Razzle Dazzle and Detroit Birds or whatever, we'd always like jump on someone else, someone else's set. Like the one of the first big shows I saw of Razzle Dazzle was like Posse Numbers in the Bubble in Wilkes Bear. It was like the last one of the last Rock Posse block. Numbers, and they we, they jumped on Cold World set and they just played the end of it. They just they weren't even like supposed to play. They were just like we're gonna play, kind of like how we just were like we just like put our foot in the door, you know, and so. They did that. They put out Cornelius the Alien. Like, they did their own little shtick or whatever when it came to, like... Cornelius. <laughs> you know, I do it for my master. Yes. You know, the Jumped World Disaster. Exactly. So, like, there's this whole That's little... deep cut. Th- yeah, <laughs> there's this whole, like, like friend joke thing that we do. And, and it's all inside jokes. Yeah, it's all inside jokes, and everyone's, like, in on it. We're like, yeah, the Jumped World, and you send me that video, and you see people just going back and forth doing jump twirls i'm like yeah oh my god my me and my friends invented that on a trampoline in livonia yes. like in 2003 uh, one of I, was my... like, <laughs> I was like we're just yes. jump twirling dude yes That's amazing. one, one of my one of my proudest <laughs> moments was i i did a jump twirl at a dead end pass show at oh launch skate shop and when i was leaving the show i saw some kids they Practi- saw it. Practicing the jump twirl. They outside. saw it and they loved it. Yeah, exactly. They saw it and exactly. they were like, "That's fucking oh, sweet." I, I, I tell you, the last time I did one, it's fucking. 
I was also oh, you busting like, it out. I was yeah, you my big <laughs> stage ass dive style. No, I like it. I like no, it. No, it was like you would. <laughs> you're gonna be underwhelmed when I say it, it was during fuck crow bags at Harpo's. <laughs> even better. That's even better. Made, like, I got Which, a pad on the back. JJ, JJ Mags or Harley Mags? JJ or Paris oh Mags? God. It's with Terror and uh, Hate Breed and Oh yeah. Obituary. I remember that oh, show. Yeah, I remember yeah, that show. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let me get there early for what a good Mags. lineup. What a great lineup. Yeah, it was cool. Harpo's is just. Just, Fuck yeah, dude! Just something else. This is wild. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it hasn't her. changed. It hasn't got better. I don't, I don't May it never worse. change. <laughs> May it never change. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Like long live the Harpo's environment. And the what, little fucking what was bacteria. That, what was that venue where like uh, the Carhartt store is downtown? Elvins. Elvins. So I remember seeing a lot of cool bands there. I saw a fucking Righteous Jams there one time. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember yeah, that's yeah. when they dropped the second. Album. Oh yeah, I remember fucking standing on stage, right? And this is when Razzle Dazzle was super. I big. think it was before. Wasn't I remember it? like DFJ like coming to town just to practice. It was with Razzle Dazzle. It was before. Yeah, yeah, practice Razzle Dazzle. Weird, right? And <laughs> and so that I remember was a standing show on stage. that we played at uh, in I'm, Romeo. Oh, the Static Age. Yeah, Static Age. Static yeah. Age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris Elmerfield. I don't yeah. remember who else played that yeah. show though, and Brad. Yep, but, Brad. Uh, what up, Brad? Um, Brad Pitt. On yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that place at Elvin's. I remember doing a jump twirl off the stage Ooh. during Righteous Jams, and no one caught me, and I landed oh. on my feet, and I went so high. I remember Skase was like, "Holy shit, that was the coolest thing I've ever that seen." Big. I was like, <laughs> I remember jumping off someone's back on stage, and you know how that stage shout is. out Skase there. You know, and then I, I landed on my feet on the ground, and I swear I came down 15 feet Ooh, on my ankles. That's man. a good jump twirl. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Is, yeah I got collagen a... implants or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, your fucking <laughs> your ankles are <laughs> fucking buzzing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's wild. <laughs> collagen, collagen. Yeah, yeah it just jizzle, jiggles a little. You don't break your bones. Buck, just cushions. <laughs> Gosh. Collagen cushions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was definitely. Did, did not you did you get that high during your drum roll during the max? No, I was on the ground. No, dude. no, no collagen for you. No, dude, collagen. no one no. caught me. I My was knees straight are concrete, bro. Shaky, dude. Straight concrete. <laughs> Got fucking a lot of weight coming down. Gravity is not my Damn, baby. I remember it's trying beautiful. to do that when Agnostic Front played there one time, and I went for the jump twirl, and the PA was above me. Right, Ooh. and so when I went to like launch off, it crushed my head, and then yeah. I Harpus? like. No, no, it Elvins. 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 We're champion. Yeah, yeah. You get full blown chaos. Hoyback was roading. Yeah. yeah. What a Hoyback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, I remember that show because um, I think it was another band's first show was there. I think not, no, I think of a different one. Did oh, Tyrant uh, play there? Not that show, uh, but for sure. Fuck, man, what local band played? I think it was Hate Inc. Dude, that honestly. was my. I'd yeah. say that the Elvins was probably like my favorite like lost venue or whatever because like i've seen so many cool bands there. agnostic front pitbull fucking like i used to see like a lot of like techno weird like party stuff down there too oh and then now there's like what carhartt there yeah like it, people though it's like a relic of the past now. yeah like, that'll so never i think be carhartt is just across the street from it because at one uh, point it was a restaurant like it was, eight ten years ago it's it? next door to where carhartt was yeah yeah on the same was, side of the street there was like a parking garage for like wayne state university yeah. and shit all right yeah, there yeah, yeah. yeah dude either oh one time i had to park across 94 because there's so many people there one time and there's a homeless guy walked up to me it's the best fucking like line pitch that i've ever heard for somebody asking you for money ever he walked up to me he's like hey man how's it going like, what's up yeah he's like hey he's like do you know what the best nation in the world is donation he's like donation got a dollar I was and like, then you give me the flag the flag <laughs> and then i'm like and then i go to my like my girl and my like because we just went to like uh the dominican republic and i'm like don't take the flag. No, don't take the flag. No, what's in your hand? <laughs> they got you now. Yeah, don't fuck, do it. They try to get like, kids in Jamaica, like putting yeah. toys in their hand. Like, do not fucking touch it. Don't that. put the iguana on your back for the picture. <laughs> don't do it. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> they want money or they'll fucking take your phone. <laughs> you wild fucking scavengers. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. But, um. So, how'd you end up, how'd you end up getting into shit? Um. As I mentioned, uh, do you know Don Armstrong? Doesn't familiar. He was ambush. Rob and Don. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, we were talking about ambush on the way here. So yeah, they were cousins, and I worked with Don at a meat market in Wyandotte Jerry's Food Market. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know uh, much about Don River. 
But uh, my dad owns the store. I spent some time here. That's okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so my dad owned the store, and he worked there oh, that's before awesome. I was old enough to. I was like seven, 16, 17. Cool. And uh, Don already worked there, but like I said, I was uh, – Oh, that's awesome. I had heard – so I started listing like the casualties and shit, just from the high school. Carlos, actually. perfect. Uh, he showed me them dropkick Murphys, like H two O and shit. Totally, totally. And then Don't it, forget your roots. Yeah, exactly. And then it kind of, uh, you know, gradually, like you find shit that you like that's better and heavier. I started listening to like, I was like Kill Switch, and Unearth, and and then I found Bleeding Through, and then I seen Let It Die there, and it's just like a snowball effect. You totally, know it. totally, totally. And then I, I had like a throw down hoodie or something that I bought from uh, the t-shirt place in the mall. Cause I oh think somebody God. like Justin Shred was awesome. there or something or somebody worked there. That Love was Justin. Scene. Yeah. And, um, Brian Ben worked at a t-shirt place. Uh, uh, okay. And I got that and, um, it's all gone to hell. Thank you. And yeah. And that's how I like. So Don, he's like, fucking throw down sucks. He's like, fucking you know, listen to terror. You were talking about Don on the way here. The Armstrong brothers? You went to high Is that who, right? Them? I went okay. to yeah. high school with them. Yeah. yeah. Wyanda, Roosevelt. Roosevelt, baby. Down River, baby. Because yeah, so I was telling him, like, I worked at Jim. My dad owned Jerry's Food Market. In Fuck Wyanda. yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, you were talking about that too. Yeah. Right? right? Okay, yeah. Pierogies. Yes. And fucking kibasa, bro. Yeah, you had the best fresh kibasa. Yeah. Is your dad still around? Or? No, no, he yeah. passed away in 2009. Okay. And uh, the story. Sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I went to his partner, and it's a whole fucked up story but gotcha you know he's got to move on and um yeah, yeah but that's how i found it and he showed me like agnostic front so your yeah. dad showed you a no, 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 agnostic no, no, no. front no don i wish my no. dad was fucking <laughs> Those bob seeger through and yeah. through oh, there we go silver man. bullet yeah you <laughs> 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 bought iggy and the stooges he's seen mc5 just down the street oh, that's at sick. the lincoln that's park sick. band show no, incredible the armstrong brother those were oi boys though. yeah those were <laughs> yeah. like they didn't have he, suspenders yeah, he but... showed me the ducky boys oh, yeah. okay. i don't know who that yeah. was because yeah, yeah. i listened to like, dropkick he's like fuck them listen to the ducky boys yeah. <laughs> i was like all right yeah. yeah we hung with ducky boys uh when we were in upstate new york with cold's life mm. okay and um lynn brother you know blood for blood yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and so I said, Don showed me Agnostic Front and Death Threat yeah. and all this oh, yeah. shit. Peace and security. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I heard Forgotten Government first because that song, uh, oh, yeah. Day Late and a Dollar Short. I don't know the name of that I song. I get fucked up every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. But, but <laughs> like, that's like how we started, like, who can't relate to so that? So what caught Who me? Who can't relate to that? That's right. What caught me was, he says, <laughs> hardcore is what we're all about. And drinking, smoking weed, and fucking hanging out. And I was like, that's my life. Healing out, sure. baby. Yeah. Healing the fuck out. <laughs> it's funny. Um, so John Sweatpants, we call him John Charbuck. Crucial John. Uh, Crucial John. He sang in Give, and he was in, a, like, he, oh my God. You got to know who this guy is. Uh, he, we... Our, our buddy CT grew up with him Shining in Life Sweetwater, Press. Sweetwater, Tennessee. They grew up together as kids. And so I remember every summer he would come up. Sweetwater. He, he, he was in the fucking military and uh, the Air Force and shit. And I, I, I was like on AIM with him or whatever, talking to him because I didn't, because he didn't have a cell phone and he only had like an iPhone. And he would be like, I can, whenever I connect to Wi Fi, I can like text you or whatever. And so I was on AIM and I talked to him and he was like, was he, dude, he, he was goes, overseas then, right? No, no. I think at this t- point he was down south or whatever. Gotcha. But he was like drinking and smoking and peeling out. Like, do you mean like in a car? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> How do I explain this to you? <laughs> they're, they're they're strange peeling spells. out like in a car. And but he would like liked it. And like he's doing like art installation shit. And he's like fucking. He did the turnstile. I mean art installation. S- singing on NPR. Singing for Give. I mean, I remember at one point Give was fucking amazing. I love them. I mean, that's shout a, that's out to a, the homies and give. Yeah, that's like li- early line of Judah, fucking yeah. all those guys before before LOJ. Yeah, 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 those guys are our boys right there. You know? Or after LOJ, excuse me, give. after yeah, LOJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. How often do you guys go to shows these days? Like, I'm like kind of removed right now, or pretty removed? Yeah, you I'm, won't um, see no warning, but I'm pretty regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you around. Um, you know, I try to go to, like as much as possible. Hmm. Like Edge Man, I love that fucking place. I love Jimmy and. I mean, I'm going now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the idea of this whole thing, man. Because, like, you know, not necessarily people uh, so you can take, you know, the guy out of hardcore, but you can't take hardcore out of the guy. And that's kind of when this sta- yeah. started, it was like, like the pandemic and shit. I was hardly going to shows even before that. I started going, like, I took maybe like four or five years off. I started going back, like, 2017 and shit like that. And then the pandemic hit. I was like, 
I love this shit and I can't fucking do it anymore. Like I took a few years off and I fucking regretted it, you know, I felt kind of guilty. But so just to have the conversations and that was the whole start of it. Like, mm-hmm. so, like people who don't go to shows, like maybe they'll hear these conversations and just fuck, remember all the good times, all Rekindle the good friends everything. that they made, fucking right. maybe you know, spark that, you know, like ignite that flame again. And, um, a lot of people have started coming back to shows, you know, and yeah. my friends and other people who have had kids and started like their real life jobs and careers, which is cool. It gets in the way. Shit gets in the way. Oh, hell yeah, it does. But if it's in you, man, it's fucking in <laughs> yeah. you. And like, you see people, like they show up like, it's like I never left, man. Like you see the same people, you give them a hug and a high five, like you've seen them like, yeah. yesterday, you know? And yeah. that's such a great thing yeah. about it. And uh, just with Detroit Birds, man, it's like it was f- fucking yesterday to me. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah and so it like just that impression for 20 years ago man that's yeah it's stuck yeah, it's and, cr- crazy how you say like you just show up all of a sudden you high five everyone when i went to that cold as life show at uh the russell mm-hmm. man that was fun that like brought a lot of things back and like it was just cool to like, come awesome. back there and see everyone and see my old friends and like wow i haven't seen them in forever and it was just like before yeah, dude. And it's just like, there's really no, you're not really skipping a beat there. It, it you, you don't know? miss a fucking beat, man. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, yeah, we know, we know. Well, life, okay. life went on. Yeah. And like, we're here now, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you kind of don't skip a beat. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Cheers. <laughs> Bing. I mean, you kind of don't skip a beat, but there's little ins and outs of when you kind of still kind of see year in, year out. You know what I mean? Like, you can kind of see how the trends in hardcore end up kind of tracking. Yeah, it absolutely You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of the one thing that I kind of find interesting about, like, you know, having consistently gone to shows is that, like, you can kind of see, like, the different variations of bands and, like, you get to see... What's popular. Yeah, that, but then you also get to kind of see the evolution of it, which is, I I feel like that's been one of the most valuable things to me of, you know, having Mm -hmm. consistently gone to shows for, you know, I don't know, close to, like, 30 years almost, but... Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 I mean... You can see, you know, um, a year after year, say a hundred people show up in throughout like a calendar year, f- ten are going to stick around, you Def- know, if even or less. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. even. Sure, I, even I, I feel like yeah. m- more people stick around now, though, because there's it's become a little bit more. I, I don't want to say acceptable, quote unquote, but you know, they m- more people are sticking around, so they'll stick around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if if I'm going, it, it's it's kind of rare in in between that I'll actually see somebody. That I know from back in the day, right? You know, so yeah, it might be some newer band that you've uh, became familiar with over the past like, five or ten years, rather than somebody from fucking uh, 1996. That, exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like a Vendetta Records, <laughs> you know. Shout out Joe Hyde again. You know, that was his shit. <laughs> Alliance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, band I think about often. Um, also, in the Raz Dazzle or er, Detroit Birds video at um, uh, Refuge. Um, uh, Kenny Smith, man, like he showed me like quit your life. That was like a, like a mm-hmm. big influence on me finding like local. Kenny music. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I've tried for him. We've had a conversation about it. just because like for fucking quit your life was so awesome to me. Like because his girlfriend of uh, Kyle at the time worked at Jerry's, and uh, like that's how I got him. She's like, yeah, my boyfriend's in this band, whatever. And I was like, that's, that's cool local. Band. Wait, what's quit your life? I don't know what that is. Quit your life, really? Yeah, tell me. Really, break don't... it down, baby. Break it down. It was like honestly. Like it was like, fuck, like pop punk, like more on the punk side. I don't even okay. know. like like uh, uh the flag band or whatever. Oh, What's it right? called? Flag band. Uh, what was it called? No, no, it was like uh, capture the flag. Oh, okay. yeah. they were like a big yes. downriver so, like pop punk band. So there was a yeah. thing. I don't even remember yeah. it. Um, uh, the Disco Alliance. Do you remember that name? Like no. it was like it was like a a collaboration of all these like fucking downriver bands. Um. All I can think of now is Capture the Flag, uh, Quit Your Life. Don Polsky. Oven Mix. Don Polsky's Down River Love Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. And um, it was just like a fun, like, hit some like fun love songs, but it was like punk rock, some screaming, some like fun break. I don't know what a breakdown it's was. It's like hot water music. Yeah, meets, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, um, uh, uh, Bedford Drive. Remember that band? <laughs> yeah. So it was that whole thing. But whatever, that's like a stepping stone into, you know, finding yeah. f- local 
punk. Finding out about Warzone and fucking <laughs> yeah, wearing dude. gardening gloves with X's on them. <laughs> well, he introduced me to um, Hope's Fall and like Poison the Well and shit. I didn't know nothing about that. I was like, what's some good music? He's like, check out Nerdy by Poison the Well. Yeah, I was, so, at, I was at the Poison the Well record release show. Holy shit. Uh, they asked you, me to play guitar for Did you them, play? Too. Yeah, I, yeah, I did played. play yeah. one show with them. You played. At Mr. Muggs. Celebrity. Because I was supposed to play <laughs> guitar. <Never seen> <laughs> uh, Derek, who was in Sleigh Bells, he was playing guitar in Poison the Well at the time, and he couldn't tour with them. So they were asking me to play guitar for them. But I ended up having to move back to Michigan, so I didn't do that tour with them. But that, that, oh, that, was, how I, that was how I linked up through the <laughs> until the end recording. Because Chris from Poison the Well played drums in both bands yeah dude but yeah only probably like 100 people at that poison the well record release show at club q in florida in 99 12 years old had no idea who they were then like it wasn't until what 2003 that's a good record yeah it's a good record yeah Uh i love poison the well they were like that screaming is like like, oh i like that this isn't fucking corn dude (laughs) you know (laughs) you know it's a fucking something that hits you deep down inside and yeah, evolution of like culture. Morning again. Uh, speaking of Damien, who who lives in Ann Arbor, but uh, Damien's originally from uh, Florida, South no Florida. Shit. Yeah, but he lives in Ann Arbor now. Yeah, fucking weird. Yeah, Michigan connection. That's why I bring it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't the well? That's crazy, man. I don't know, dude. This is fucking. What else is going on? Is uh, like. Do we have anything else? Sure. Cur- currently, currently, like I reside in Ferndale with a- Ian over Ferndale, here. What up? Like, we're, we're, we're Ferndaleans. Yeah, was Ferndale. <laughs> and uh, I was living Southwest before Chicago before T Bone still in Southwest. Yeah. Shout out Bone Daddy, Bone Daddy, Thelonious Bone, the one and um, only, the one and only. And then you got CT. C. Titty. Master, Master C. He's, he's over in uh, East English Village and sometimes in San Francisco. So this bird be flying. The bird so, be flying. So I don't know. You know, we be, we be flying, but like, I don't know. Now, yeah. it's kind of nice knowing that people care. People do now, care, man. People now care. They always had. They just. And, and that's the thing is like. We're vocal about it. We. When we first started and did everything, it was all like a labor of love, completely a labor of love. Like, I didn't care if we got, like, even when I DJ, I, I DJ every once in a while. I, I haven't done it recently, but I, I don't, I don't care about making money. Like, it's all for the, like, the, the effort. It's all for, like, the, the moment, you know? And so I remember some, some place you DJed. Yeah. It never, it never really was for, like, for, like, money. It was literally just to have a good time and, like, to have like a fun time to talk about and like laugh back like we are right now, you know? And so I don't know if, if I can't say that it's like never going to happen again, because I mean, what, what 2014 was the last show was vulgar, vulgar display. Yeah. In uh, 10 years ago in the, the bowling alley. Yes. <laughs> garden, garden bowl, garden bowl. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand how easy it would be to make a Detroit bird show happen? It's tougher no, than I, you think. We, it's we have tougher to, than you think. We have to talk to T Bone. T Bone. T Bone needs OGs. T Bone is like the most elusive, and he's the most like well, he's the most invader. Invader. Bird, yeah. He's the most coined person because like he is honestly the Detroit bird. Like he invader. Ripped, he rips it on the stick. Like he's wrote all of the guitar parts. He is like the most like punk like rock dude like he like when we played that um refuge benefit show he took a bunch of ecstasy and he went to um uh what's his name the guy from um the stooges uh he went to um iggy pop no (laughs) he went to the guy the guy who died fred sonic smith's gravesite and it was like raining and like he like had to hop the fence back out and he was wearing like those like striped bell bottom pants the whole Jesus time. Like, and then he went when he went Good and played, style. it's Good like style. he had like the big glasses on and like I had to rescue him from like getting wrapped up by like the, the wire. Like it was a it was a hard thing, it was arduous. But like it's worth it though. You know? Like it's it might be really hard work and everything, but it, it's totally worth it. But like I mean, this is the mystique we're talking about here. Yeah, like, he, it's it's totally worth it to like do it. Like, it's just kind of it's gonna be every couple of years, <laughs> <laughs> right time, yeah. right place, right circumstances. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the buzz is out there, man. And it's cool to think about. Like, yeah, let well, this all started with Jimmy Lawson. Yeah, like, as he did the podcast. Shout out, Bad Beat, best fucking triple B band ever. Yeah, um, yeah we're just fucking. He's like. 
he was sitting right here. He's like, that, by the way, is the best fucking record ever pressed. Any Detroit band, any hardcore band ever. He's because like, I love that band more than anything. I was like, that's why it's there, dog. It's all about the energy, though. It's like literally like like you said before. You're like, these guys are punk rock. It's like I didn't even think about it that way when I was doing it. But like that's how you perceived it. And, but like that's what I want to hear, though, is that like – fucking anarchy and like but like positive anarchy yeah. you know like positive like <laughs> junk like, portal anarchy that's what i'm yeah, talking man. about here fucking like fucking creepy crawling war shit, zone yeah. meets fucking bad brains is what i'm talking about that's dude so good. You know? and a little bit of murphy's <laughs> murphy's law for good measure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just to even you out <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So Fuck, that's kind of like the the music vibe we were going for you know i remember it, at the time i was I was, I mean, Ian played in Razzle Dazzle a bunch. I played, and, like, I remember talking to Haroon, he's like, we're trying to do, like, it's all, everyone thinks it's, like, Murphy's Law, but, like, we're trying to do Antidote. It's, like, fast, quick, mm-hmm. one-minute songs. And I'm like, yeah, that's, like, that's the shit I'm into. Like, that's, like, complex, but, like, weird, you know? Like, but, like, quirky-ass lyrics and, like. Fun, man. Yeah, this fun stuff. Fucking fun, dude. You know? Peeling out, man. <laughs> right. That's, right. Yeah. That's it. I don't, well, peel, any- I don't peel anymore. I don't peel. I don't peel. I did a podcast him a while ago, or like, like two weeks ago, and we were just talking about the Detroit Birds again. He's like, he's like, so are you in your fucking basement, like drinking, smoking, and peeling out? That's right. I was like, That's oh, right. you fucking every day, dude. What, what a every fucking mongoloid. Like, what yeah. time is it? I'm taking my Ambien right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're about an hour and 25 minutes in. So. That being said, we covered a lot, talked a lot of shit. Yeah. Had some good memories. Absolutely. Brought up some things you probably never thought you'd think of again, maybe. Or unless you think about it all the time. Yeah. Just waiting for the day. Yeah. Dug it up. Yeah. Look, you gotta <laughs> fucking you have to, you know, to like, you gotta um, bust upload out the it into your brain and fucking put it in that frontal cortex and put it out to the universe and yeah. you never know what can happen. Thank you for doing that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Got to. That's it. <laughs> fucking Yeah, thank you. Thank you for talking. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's it. We'll fucking talk later. Thank you. Bye.